hey there, one of the first things we do when we're engaging with a new client is audit their analytics because a lot of times the data is wrong. And even speaking with our clients, a lot of times they'll tell us they just don't trust the data. Well, Google's come out with a new tool that can help this to some extent. It's a new tag diagnostics tool, and we'll show you how to find it and how to use it and see if it can help you in your journey to better data. There's a couple different ways to find the tag diagnostic tool. Um, you can get it in analytics. It's a little convoluted. You can get it in tag manager. We'll show you how to do that in a minute. And you can also see it in Google ads. So let's take a look in analytics first. So in your analytics account, you're going to go to admin, your data stream, open up your web data stream or your app. This also works for app tagging. Uh, we'll go down to configure settings. And you can see here is the Google tag information. And this is where it gives you some of the basic information about your tag. So it's going to grade it on whether it's okay or needs attention and give you a link to the issues. Now, what is what do these attention levels mean or the grading mean? So the, the excellent is no issues detected. That's going to be green. Good, everything looks good. There's no issues, but there may be some recommendations about your Google tag quality. And then uh, needs attention is finding an issue, but it's not necessarily critical. And then urgent means something bad's happened, right? Like there's something going on that's going to drastically impact your data. So on this site, we see that they have the Google tag. Let's go look, take a look at the issues. Now this is where it's going to list your issues. And you can see this one has that we've got some old universal tag and universal analytics tags on the site. That's not a huge deal, right? Like they're not collecting data anymore. Um, you know, the data in universal analytics supposedly started to go away July 1st. Um, and so it is best practice to remove these because any additional tags on your site are just going to cause load times, you know, and, and increase your load times on the page. It's potential errors that could happen on the page. So best practice, remove them. It's not super critical. Some of your pages are not tagged. Now this is pretty critical, right? Um, so we're going to go in there and see what that is in a minute, but let's take a look at the troubleshooting, uh, documentation that Google provided. So other things that can be listed on here. So one of them is additional domains that are detected for your configuration. So this means that they're seeing domains that are not your base domain or it's not a subdomain, but another domain that is passing Google tag data. So it's got your tag on it. And so you want to add that in your web stream. You can add additional domains to your web stream. This is often the, you know, if will happen if you have like a, a landing page tool, maybe it's a third party tool that you use for landing pages for your, um, for your campaigns. We'll list actually some vendors that we use for those. It gives you more control over your landing pages. Um, and a lot of times it's easier than dealing with the, our client sites or with your site, if it takes a long time to build stuff out, that kind of stuff. We do have some videos that we've done in the past about landing pages, um, but we'll put a link in the description if you want to explore more landing page tools. But a lot of times you can add your analytics to those, and that's a different domain. Um, same thing if you're using something like HubSpot for CRM for landing pages, or uh, you know you just have another site that's part of your sister sites. Um, that, uh, you know, you have your code on. And so you need to add that in the admin in analytics and we'll take, we can take a look at that, um, in a minute, but let's go through some more of these. So, uh, the other issues are that your config command is out of order. That's a little, um, uh, rare in my experience. It's usually happening if you're doing manual G tag implementation on your site. So say someone's not using. Google Tag Manager and their development team is implementing uh, tags directly on the site. Sometimes those can get out of order and it's sending, you know, information incorrectly. So that's where you'd need to check that out. Conversion, missing conversion link, um, linker. 
this is really common. So people forget, right? So this is where if you have Google ads or flood light programs running, uh, primarily Google ads, there is a Google ads conversion tag, but there's a conversion linker tag as well. You can add that super easily in Google tag manager. It's actually a pre uh, configured setup in there. And if you have access to Google Tag Manager, you can take care of that problem. This is just alerting you to the fact that some of your conversion data might be out of whack with your Google Ads if you don't do this. And then the issue that we saw, some of your pages are not tagged. So let's take a closer look at that. Now, this is saying that for this site, 40 pages are not tagged. Now. I know that most of them are tagged and we can verify this and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, but this is important to know. And I think one of the reasons we're seeing this, cause we've seen this on some of our clients since this tool came out where a large portion of their pages appear to be not tagged by Google. Now it could be a bug in this new diagnostic tool. Most likely it's a page latency problem. And we're seeing this on sites that we know are slow and those sites seem to be returning this error more often. And that could be because while Google's indexing the site, for whatever reason, the Google tag just isn't firing as quickly as this tool would like. And so it's coming back as being not tagged. But there's a way we can verify this and check this. Missing tags are a problem. And we see this a lot of times, especially if you have sections of your site that maybe work on WordPress, but you have an e-com site, or somebody did a landing page that's a manual landing page and they forgot to tag it that kind of stuff. Most CMSs are pretty good with this now, but it does happen. So it's important to check. So what you can do to verify this is go in and take a look at these tags that it's saying they're not, these pages that are not tagged. And if you hover over it, you can see this gives you the plus or minus. It'll let you um, do this, but it also gives you a link to the open and tag assistant. Now the tag assistant is something in Google Tag Manager that we use all the time, and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail. Um, that is our primary auditing tool when we're looking to see if a tag is firing correctly, and I'll show you what we mean by that. So we're gonna open that in Google Tag Manager. It's asking to connect to that page. All right, and now you can see it says the tag assistant is running on this page. This is the page that Google thinks didn't have the tag. Now we can go back to the tag assistant and we can see that the tag did fire. So you can see the different loading statuses of the tag here in this, and this, we make sure that we're on the, the right tag for this because we do have the old UA tags that Google's mad at. Um, and then we have the AdWords tag on there as well. So we want to make sure that we have the GA4 tag selected and we can see that you know, at different stages, we can see what's firing. And so we can see that the container loaded, configured, history changed, we clicked on something or did something, and it did trigger a page view. Now we can go in and make sure that this is in fact tracking this because we can see, go back to the site, and if we click on something or if we scroll, so I've just scrolled 100% down. That's going to fire an event tag for scroll, which is a default tag in GA4. And let's go see. Scroll. So it did send that data, um, and it's, um, it's tracking that correctly. So let's just do one other thing to check. Let's click on something. Okay, we clicked on a product. Let's go back here. And we viewed an item that went through correctly. and there was a history change of page for you. So we can see in Tag Manager that this page that Google thought was not tagged is in fact tagged. And so when you go through and, and verify these, they will eventually actually fall out of this report. So um, if we reload this report, I think it'll show that that is okay now. Yeah, so it was at 40, now it's down to 39. So we verified for Google that that tag is still there. Now, it may be onerous to go through and do this for all of your pages, but I would recommend doing is going through and checking, you know, random pages, see if they 
you know, depending on the structure of your site, that there might be some tag problems. You can also download this report. So if you want to send this as a spreadsheet, send it to your developers, you can do that. Um, if they don't have access to your analytics and they can check the tags as well. But this is a good practice to go through here and, um, you know, just make sure that these are tagged correctly. So let's look. So we're going to take just another random one just to make sure. Um, let's do this one just random. Oh, that one actually says it's tagged correctly. You can actually uh, sort these. So if you click on the not tagged, it will show you just the not tagged. Or these don't have any recent activity, so they haven't been passing data recently. And then these Google knows are tagged. So let's look at the not tagged, and we'll just select one. Check it in the diagnostics here. All right, so the tag assistant's running on this page, um, and we know that we can test this, so we're gonna go to the tag assistant. And we can see that it did, in fact, launch a page view on that history load and that we viewed an item. So those are both events that triggered. So we know that that one is fine. So like I said, some of these missing pages may in fact be missing. It does behoove you to check that just to make sure. But I think a lot of times it's from page load delays, which is also important information because if your page is delayed in loading, if Google's tool is not seeing the tags fire, there are chances that the tag is not firing when visitors are coming to your site. So if this is an ongoing problem with your site or of latent pages where they're not loading quickly enough, then it's something you should probably look into or have your developers look into. Some really common um, you know, problems with page load speed are the size of images that you have, it's things like that, that you can optimize. So you can go through, compress your image sizes, you can you know, work on extraneous code on the site that might be causing delays. One of the things we see a lot of times in e-commerce sites, especially Shopify sites, is some of the plugins people use. So if there's third-party apps running on the site, those could be delaying your site pretty significantly. One of the big offenders that we see is chat bots. So if you have some of the you know plugins for chat bots that you know pop up and annoy people, or even uh, the interstitials that'll pop up and that kind of stuff, those can significantly delay your site. So one of the things that you want to do is maybe pause those and then see if the problem is still continuing in Google. Is it still seeing these tags not being on there? Is it you know is that what's causing the page delay? So it's something to look into. There's a reason it's happening, so it doesn't hurt to look in all the possibilities that might be causing these tags to not fire correctly. Because at the end of the day, you want quality data. All right. So the one issue with missing domains from your configuration. You can configure your domains here under this Google tag page. Go to configure domains. And this is where you can add a domain. So you can see that we have um, this one here. We're going to accept that suggestion. So anything that goes to that main domain is going to be, you know, acknowledged as legitimate traffic. Um, you can add other domains. So it maybe it contains something, maybe it contains your brand name. Um, but you can do various configurations there. So for instance, if it was a landing page from a third party site, you could add that domain here that it contains that domain and then save it. And then, um, you will make sure that, you know, it's, it's validating those tags as well. Okay. So now this is the Google tag in analytics. You can see it was a little clunky to get there, but that is typical Google. So they tend to not make things super easy. Let's take a look at how to do it in Tag Manager. It's much easier, but it doesn't have exactly the same information. Um, so if you go to Tag Manager, we've logged in. This is the same site. Uh, you can see the information for the um, diagnostic tool up here. So if you click through on the view issues, it's the same interface, right? So you're seeing the untagged pages. This one doesn't mention about the UA pages, the UA code, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and you can see that this is actually giving us different data now that we've logged in and we're, um, maybe it's assessed the site a little bit differently. So, um, this one is seeing just one page. Uh, so it's, it's 
improved. It went through and respidered apparently in that short period of time. So we're only seeing one page there, and but it's the same setup. It's the same interface that from the other section. So let's take a look at Google Ads. Google Ads, so let's show you here. Um, our, this account doesn't have any ads running right now, but if you go to Tools, okay, and you're going to go to the Data Manager, and you can see we've added other connected products here to this account, one of which was the Google tag. And so you can click Manage, and it goes back to that same interface. So you have the the interface where it says it needs attention. You can click on it just like we did before, see the untagged pages. And you can see this is updating kind of in real time. So it's some of them are, for whatever reason, it's seeing not tagged sometimes, and for others it is. Again, that tells me that it's probably some sort of page latency. Um, maybe the site's just super active, um, or it could be a bug in this tagging tool, but it behooves you to check it, so just to make sure that these pages are tagged correctly. Um, we have run into, well, as testing this tool and going through it, page, pages that we assumed were tagged correctly, we've actually found some errors. So this this has helped, um, but it is the a little varying in the information and data that you'll see um, based on your interface. So that's how you get to those two. Um, you may see on some of your pages um, consent errors as well or issues with consent tags. Um, that is rolling out slowly. Um, so Google isn't necessarily, you may not see that in your reports or you may have your consent set up correctly in Google to do that. It's largely for sites that are uh, advertising or doing any work in Europe. The EU has much stricter consent data um, you know, requirements. Um, so you may see that in some of your, uh, interfaces as issues. Um, again, that is a whole different <laughs> topic of setting up consent correctly and that kind of thing in your analytics and in your ads. Um, but you may see that data, you may not. So it's, it's coming in slowly. So at the end of the day, monitoring your tags is extremely important. Changes happen to the site, especially when you have people maybe multiple people working on a site at the same time, right? Like lots of hands in the cookie jar. You may have developers, you may have agencies, you may have other people making changes to your analytics, to your site, to your Google Tag Manager. And the great way to now monitor that to see if there's some awful issue with your tags is to check this out. So I'd recommend you check this out on at least a weekly basis. Um, if you have lots of people working on your site all the time, you may want to check it daily just to make sure that nothing has gone wrong. Because the longer you wait, if the data is not coming through, that's lost data that you're never gonna get back. So if somebody inadvertently removed a tag from your site or from a page, it's gone forever. So you gotta make sure you get that tag back on there in a timely fashion. So encourage you to check this regularly. So if this was helpful, let us know if you have questions about this, or if you need assistance with your Google implementation, please reach out and contact us. Our agency does Google implementations all the time for a variety of different sites, everything from small websites to very large e-commerce uh, websites, websites using Shopify, Shopify Plus, using other you know, um, commerce tools, uh, whatever that is, we could help you with that implementation or to diagnose any problems that might be coming through or just to make you feel better about your data. So let us know if you need that help. Feel free to contact us. Our links are down in the description. Hope you have a great day. Good luck with Google Analytics 4 because it is a problem. And uh, let us know if there's other content like this that you would like to see. Leave those in the comments as well. Have a great one. We'll talk to you soon.